Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the KitchenAid mixer external gear. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new external gear. The external gear is one of the gears that drives the mixer. The main reason you should be changing it out is if it's damaged and the mixer's not turning. In order to change the part, we have to open up the mixer. We're going to take off the accessories just to get them out of the way. You want to make sure the bowl is in the down position. And then we can reach in and take off the beater. All you have to do is lift up on it, turn it clockwise, and then let it drop down. You can pull it out. To get the bowl up, we're just going to lift it off the mounting pegs and pull it out. Now we're around at the back of the mixer. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the screw that holds the trim on. Once you have the screw out, you can pull the trim off and set it aside. With the trim out of the way, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the cover on. There's two on this side and two on the other side. Once you have all four screws out, you can lift the cover off and set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the two screws that hold the speed control board in place. Once you have both screws out, we're going to lift the board up and out of the way. We have to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the tabs that hold the little sensor in. Just have to press on each side. Get them to release. Once you have both tabs released, you can pull the sensor out of the motor and then we can swing the speed control out of the way. If your mixer has the old transmission housing like ours does, the manufacturer recommends that you upgrade it to the metal housing because it's stronger. We're not going to show you in this video because that part has its own video. We're going to use a Phillips screwdriver to take out the four screws that hold the transmission cover down. Once you have all the screws out, we can lift the transmission housing off. Now that you have the housing off, we can take out the accessory drive gear and then clean it up and set it aside. If you have the metal housing, you can uh, clean it up so you can reuse it. Once you have them separated, you can set them aside. If the external gear has failed, it really can't contaminate the grease inside the gear case. But since you're in here anyway, it might be a good idea just to clean it out and regrease everything like we're going to. If you decide not to regrease, just set all the parts aside and save your old grease. First thing we're going to do is lift off the worm gear in the bearings. Just have to lift up on it to get it out. Once you have it out, you can use some towels to clean it up and set it aside. When you're taking the worm gear apart, you can slide the bearings off each end and on one style, there's a one-piece thrust washer in here, and on some of the other ones, there's a three-piece one. So make sure you get that off, and the rear sleeve bearing. Now we're going to clean off all the grease that we can on the, these gears in the drive shaft. Once you have it cleaned up pretty good, you can wipe it down so we can get the snap ring off. Once you have access to the snap ring, we can grab the snap ring pliers and carefully take it off. All you have to do is put the pins from the snap ring pliers into the holes. And you can spread the snap ring apart. You don't want to spread it apart too far, just far enough to get it to come off the shaft. You don't want to bend it because we're going to reuse it. Once you have it free, you can pull it off and wipe it down. Now that we have the snap ring off, we can reach in and lift up on the bevel gear. If you have to, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to help lift it up. Once you have it free, you can clean it up and set it aside. 
Now that we have the bevel gear out, we can use a punch to push the pin out that holds the worm follower gear in. Shouldn't be in there that tight, so you should just be able to push it through and grab it from the other side. Once you have it out, you can clean it up and set it aside. Now we can take out the worm follower gear. If it's in there tight, you can use a flathead screwdriver to help work it up the shaft. As you're working it up the shaft, you want to make sure you hold on to the planetary assembly down below. It's going to come out. Once you have the gear off, you can clean it up and set it aside. And we can drop the planetary out and set that aside. Now that we have all the gears out, we can clean out the old grease. In order to change the external gear, we have to turn the mixer over. So we're going to put the speed control board and the cover back on. In order to put the speed control board on, we're just going to lift it up, set it in place, and then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Now that we have the board mounted, we can put the cover back on. We're just going to set it in place, and then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. In order to turn the mixer over, we made a little U-shaped support that we can set the top down into. That way when you flip it over, it's supported. So we're just going to carefully set it down. Once you have it turned over, we have access to the external gear. The external gear is just pressed into the housing, so we're going to use a big flathead screwdriver and a block of wood to protect the housing while we use a hammer to tap it out. If it's in there really tight, you may have to have somebody hold the base in order to keep the mixer from moving. You have to go around from side to side changing your positions until you get the uh, external gear to pop free. Once you have the external gear free, you can pull it off the mixer. Here's the old external gear next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new external gear in, you want to make sure that this little tab right here goes into the notch. And you also want to make sure that the angled side goes down into the opening. That's the bottom of the gear. So we're just going to set it into place and get that tab lined up. We can tap it in place with the hammer. Once you have the gear tapped down so it's even with the housing, we have to grab another tool to make sure we seat it all the way down. We're just going to use a punch and a hammer and tap this down the rest of the way. You want to go around to a few different spots and tap it down evenly. Once you have it tapped down all the way, we can put the mixer back on its feet. Once you have the mixer back on its feet, we can take the cover off. To get the cover off, we're just going to use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws. Once you have the screws out, we can lift the cover off and set it aside. And then we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the speed control board on. Once you have the screws out, you can carefully lift the speed control board out and swing it out of the way. Once you have the board out of the way, we can put everything in the gear case back together. The first gear that we have to put on once we push the planetary up into place is the worm follower gear. So we're just going to grease it up and have it ready so that when the shaft comes up, we can set it down in place and put the pin in to hold the planetary shaft in place. Once you have it greased up, you can set it aside.
Before we put the planetary assembly in, we have to grease the external gear in the pinion gear. So we're going to reach underneath and put some grease onto the external gear. Then we can grease up the pinion gear. Once you have the external gear coated, we can put some on the pinion gear. Once you have the pinion gear coated, we can lift the planetary up into the mixer. Once you have it all the way up, we can grab the worm follower gear and set it down onto the shaft. You want to make sure the side with the raised side is up. Once you have it on, we can grab the pin and push it into place. And you want to line the gear up so the pin and the raised part are lined up together. That way it'll be lined up for the beveled gear. Before you put the beveled gear on, we're going to put some grease on it. When you're putting this grease into the gear case, you can pretty much put as much as you want on the gears. And then you're going to use a total of about six ounces to fill up the whole gear case. Once you have it greased up, you can set it down onto the shaft. And you may have to turn it a little bit to get it to line up and drop down all the way so we can put the snap ring on. To put the snap ring on, we're just going to put it onto the snap ring pliers. Just have to line up the pins and the holes. Once you have it on there, we can put it onto the shaft. You don't want to spread it very far, just far enough to get it over the shaft. Once you have it all the way down, you can pull the snap ring pliers off. And then if it didn't go down all the way, you can take a flathead screwdriver and push down on it to make sure it snaps into the groove. There were two types of worm gears used during production. Whichever type you had, you can just put it back in the way you took it out. During removal, we discovered our old one was damaged, so we have to upgrade it to the new style. Keep in mind, if you have to do this, it requires new front and rear sleeve bearings, as well as a new thrust style bearing. Upgrading the worm gear also requires upgrading the motor, but that's covered in its own video. Now we can put the worm gear in. We're going to put the rear sleeve bearing on. This is the one that has the extra flange on it. Right, it goes in between the gear and the bearing. Then we can put the thrust bearing on. It's three pieces. You want to make sure that the grooves go towards the center. So put one washer on with the grooves and put the ball bearings down. And then the final washer against the ball bearings. Then you can put the front sleeve bearing on. This is the one that has the no flange. So it sits right up against the thrust bearing. Once you have everything together, we can put some grease on it before we put it in. Once you have it greased up, we can set it into the gear case. You want to make sure that the flats on the front and rear sleeve bearing are vertical. You can set it down into the housing. Now we can put some grease on the accessory drive gear. Just going to fill in all the teeth. Once you have the teeth lubed up, we can grab the housing and drop it in there. Once you have it in there, we can just set it aside. And we're going to take the extra grease that we have and kind of pack it around this whole area and fill everything in. You don't want to put any of this grease into the housing. You just want to kind of build a cone up around the shaft and all the gears. That way all the grease is on the gears and not up in the housing where it's not hitting anything. Once you have it in place, we can put the housing back on. 
all you have to do is line it up and flip it over. Once you have it lined up, you can push it down into place. If it won't go down all the way, you may have to turn this little hub attachment right here so it lines up with the beveled gear. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in to hold it down. Once you have the housing back on, we can remount the speed control board. We're just going to lift it up and plug in the sensor. It can only go one way. Just make sure it clips into the motor and stays in place. Once you have it there, we can rotate the board over and line it up with the screw holes. Once you have it in place, we can use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in. Once you have the speed control back in place, we can put the cover back on the mixer. I'm just going to line it up and set it down in place. Once you have it in place, we can use a Phillips screwdriver to put in the four screws. Now that we have the cover back on, we can put the trim ring on. We're just going to set it in place, and we can go around back and use the Phillips screwdriver to put the screw in to hold it on. Once you have the trim ring on, we can put the bowl back on. To put the bowl back on, we're just going to line up the pins on each side. Once you have it in place, you can push down on the back to snap it in. Once you have it in place, we can put the beater back on. To put the beater back in, we're just going to line it up on the shaft and uh, make sure the pin goes into the cutout and lift it up into place. Turn it counterclockwise to lock it on. Once you have it in place, we can plug the mixer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.